God. All right, Doc. Okay. Yeah. Good morning. Well, I gather that all of this is about what happened yesterday. He got a good look at my burn this morning. Yeah. How is it? How does it feel? It's not bad. Whatever you put on over there in an emergency seems to be working. Uh -huh. Family planning gave me the day off anyway. Oh, well, that's good. So, Da's pretty upset about all this. Ah, uh, he's just upset in general. He wants to know the whole story. What exactly went on in that boiler room? Who's following up? And why we didn't tell him about it yesterday? Actually, he really wants to talk to Ma. With her gone, he's got no way to blow off steam. Steam. <laughs> Still hurting, darling. Patrick, why don't you uh, put something else on it no, or something? No, Daddy, Daddy, it's it's all right. It's just I wince when I think of something hot. Couldn't get my tea down this morning. It'll pass. Oh, you going along to work yesterday? I don't know what's the matter with you kids. What are you trying to be a martyr or something? Patrick, how could you let go back to work? Look, she wanted to. I trusted her decision. So did Jack. All right. Now, who's doing what about this outrage, huh? The district attorney and the precinct are on it. Jack called Frank, who sent an emergency crew right over there to fix that boiler. And Jack is outside at this minute, looking up to find out who the people are behind CNP Realty. Oh, terrific. Fat lot of good that's going to do. Da, that's everything we can do. Ah, uh, how can you make a stupid statement like that, Patrick? There's the CNP Realty to talk to. There's this, this guy, Pyle. These people have to be taken by the scruff of the neck and made to understand they cannot meddle with Siobhan or any other member of this family. Da, Jack is right. They're just too big for us to touch. It's absolutely true, Dad. C&P Realty nearly blew up an entire building yesterday. That's 12 families, one columnist, and a senator's sister, Taddy. These people don't give a damn. And we haven't got anything to scare them with. I finally figured that out. So what are we supposed to do? Just lie here and let him walk all over us in this country? Ah, calm yourself, John. The law is covering this undercover and quiet. Quiet? All right, so does that mean I have to be quiet? Don't I have the right to speak up? You can rave and rant all you want at us, but stay away from Martin Pyle. I can understand why Jack Nelly'd be afraid. Oh, oh no, Daddy, he isn't. Not I am not going to knuckle under to anybody. Daddy, please. I would not even be here to worry about if Ethel Green had not unlocked that boiler door. Jack and I were lucky. It could happen, it happened, but it's not going to happen twice. If you start going Baby, around... uh, uh, locked what door? Somebody locked you in the place? Well, maybe I didn't make that... But all you said it. was that somebody put a, a rag or something over the pressure gauge. You said this guy Pyle was responsible, but all I thought you meant was that he fired up a defective boiler. Well, somebody did slam the door shut behind us and then bolt it. I only got a glimpse of him. That's attempted murder, Patrick. Police know all about it. No, that's a attempted murder. No. Where is he? Where's his office? Daddy, you can't go. The hell down I there. can't. Where do I find this Martin Pyle? <laughs> storming out of here, Daddy, or I'm gonna have to call up Frank. Frank would be furious. If Frank were here, he'd go with me. The dog, I'll take the dog with me. Oh, John, use your head. Finn would be about as much protection as, as a kitten. You need bigger power than that, bigger power than having a son of the United States Senate. Sit down and have a cup of tea and calm yourself. Power of the press. The power of a free press in a free society. Jack won't. I'm not talking about Jack. You're right, Kevin. Got to use my head. We have access to a nationally syndicated columnist who is not afraid to speak his mind to anybody. No. Yes. Call Wes Leonard. Daddy, we'll get this building blown up. 
Are you going to call Wes Leonard, or am I going to call Wes Leonard? Wes Leonard has already talked to Pyle. He got no place, and he, he wrote one column the already. Column. That... It's the column. It inflamed the whole situation. The column very likely is the reason the boiler was turned on and left to explode. You are going to have a war on your hands. All right, Patrick, we got a war on our hands, don't we? I didn't start it. My house has been vandalized, right? There's been an attempt on my daughter's life. For heaven's sake, Patrick. I don't want to take any unnecessary risks, but I'm not going to hide under the table either. Leonard. Leonard. All right, I'll call him. All right, thank you very much. Kevin, you're going to hold down the fort here, right? I will not. What? If you're going anywhere in that condition, I'm going with you. I'd certainly be more protection than that gargantuan lapdog. All right, I agree with you on that. Not that I approve of what you're doing, because I think you've taken leave of your senses. But if you insist on going, I'll call Earl and have him take over the bar. There's no answer. Oh, darling, it's a newspaper office. Somebody has to... I'm calling him at home. At home? At this hour of the morning? The man... Wes is kind of a night owl. Oh, hello, Wes. It's Siobhan. Yeah, oh, now she calls. Only 36 hours late. What? Our tentative date. Ow. I, 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 our tentative date. I mean, you didn't even call back. I, I, I obviously, you forgot about it completely. I'm sorry. I was angry, but now I'm just a little hurt. I'm sorry. Wes, there's been some things happening here, w trouble. Uh, the other night, we had a brick thrown through our living room window. Then we had a dangerous boiler. And I'm standing here with a third degree burn on my arm. Look, I'm not making much sense of this. There's a lot more to it than I'm telling you. Perhaps if I could see you, uh, would you meet us, my father and I, at Mr. Pyle's office? Sure. When? Now, as soon as possible. He will. He'll look at you. Maeve not gone a week and you're acting like a madman. She'd be wild if she knew you were doing this. Maeve Kaleri. Daughter of Michael Kaleri, who'd stand up and fight for his rights to his dying day. If Maeve were here, she'd lead us to the barricades, man. Well, wait for me. I'm going to call Earl. Just get my coat. Pat, you better come with us, too. Are you kidding? I'm not letting him out of my sight. I really wish that he wouldn't do this. Uh -huh. Well, we know he's making a mistake, but we're not going to let him go alone, right? Let's go. Take the purse. Earl, Kevin, can you fill in this afternoon? Grant. Yeah, the whole afternoon. Yeah, don't make any social plans. Good. 
I know, honey. Did you get any sleep? Maybe. Miriam was here. Oh, was she? Mm -hmm. She, she looks so sad and tired. She told me that she started to babysit again. But for Ryan now. Sweetheart. Christmas time. Yeah. It was a beautiful Christmas. I keep thinking about it, too. Oh, Seneca. Oh. Oh. Easy. 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 It must be time for another shot, please. Seneca will give me another shot. No, 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 honey, you have another hour and a half. Now, just try to relax. Come on. I can't. It hurts, and I'm wide awake. I just don't want to think. Seneca, please, tell them to give me a shot. I can't. <sighs> Honey, listen. I have to go, but I'll be right back. <sighs> Maybe I could, uh, maybe I could read. A lady came around with a card of books, but I, I didn't have any money. I know that I could hold a book for five or ten minutes. Sure you could. Hey, what a terrific idea. <laughs> there were about four or five titles that I, I recognize. I think that fifty dollars would buy all of them. Fifty dollars? <laughs> yeah, well... They're hardcover, and I don't think that I could read fine print lying down. Let's see. Honey, 50 bucks would just about clear me out. Uh, here, let me give you 25. That ought to hold you, huh? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Listen, if I see the book, lady, I'll send her in, okay? Yes. I love you. Miss Bolak. Miss Morris said you, you wanted me. I need what we talked about. Something, something for the pain, you mean? Anything. Anything that will help. I have the money. Fifty. Twenty-five. But as much as that will buy. 
I hate to turn you down, Mrs. Bullock. You're a nice lady, and I want to help you. No, no, li listen to me. I couldn't get 50. My husband, he would know. But the money's in the drawer. Take it. I'm sorry. You, you said $50, 50 pills. Give me 15. <laughs> 10. And take all the money. No, 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 no. That would be cheating you, and I don't believe in that. Besides, it's not me who goes into that room. It's my friends. And they won't take the risk for less than $50. That's how it is, you see. It's all or nothing. You don't want to help me. Get out of here. So there must be somebody else you could ask. Well, 25 more, and we're there. Your whole family works here, right? Your, your brother and your sister? Get out! Look, I feel for you. If I could do you a favor, I would. She's a mother losing her only child. It's the worst kind of hell. You shouldn't have to lie here, missing him hour after hour. But I do. Oh, I know. Your back is hurting you the whole time, isn't it? Yes. You do understand, don't you? But they don't. Please. I need something now. I get the rest of the money. Ah, hey, you can do it. Call me when you're set. I'll take care of it. that thug that showed us in here? No, not by name, but uh, he came with Pyle to one of Ethel's meetings. I think he's the vice president in charge of muggings and window smashing. Oh, he may be the guy who... Oh, my God! Hello. Hi. How you doing? There. And hello to you. How's your arm? Oh, it's all right. You're wonderful to get here so fast. I'm sorry about the other night. You're forgiven? But say that part again about how wonderful I am. All right, if she won't, I will. You did a great column on the rent strike, West, and I want to tell you personally how grateful I am you're here today backing us up. Glad to do it. I envy you your family, Mr. Ryan. Oh, that's good. Uh, John has put your name on the night patrol roster. That's our vigilante group. We wander the streets keeping an eye on... Oh, well, you cut it out. He's kidding. I know. You, Mr. Pyle... Yeah. I know some of you. Well, I think you may know two me, me too, in a way, Mr. Pyle. I'm Johnny Ryan. You heaved a brick through my window the other day. What brick? What do you people want? I want you to understand something, mister. No more locking my daughter up in any basement rooms with furnaces. That's a third-degree burn she's got there, thanks to you. Now, I want to get the message through loud and clear. No more violence of any kind. Now, you tell that to whoever it is gives you the orders. Look, I manage the office, I pick up my paycheck. Nobody gives me orders, and I don't know what you're talking about. We're talking about the same thing we were talking about in Ethel Green's apartment. Five buildings with no heat, no hot water. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. If that's what you're talking about, there's no problem. Now, CMP really has repaired all those buildings that we're talking about. There's plenty of hot water and there's plenty of heat. I know because I checked them all out personally. As a matter of fact, we just installed a new boiler in one of them. Oh, I can imagine which building that was. Could it be the same one where Jack Finelli and I were locked in the basement waiting to be blown up with everybody else in that building? What are you talking about locked in? Listen, lady, I told you once You before. can tell us all you want to, mister, but nobody here is going to believe you. That's the case. I guess this meeting is over, isn't it? All right. We'll be only too happy to leave, but you haven't seen the last of us. Look, you did good for your friends. It's all over. Why don't you go home? Is that your personal advice, or is it a warning, or I hope it's not a threat? 
listen, when things get complicated when they're taken apart. Now, this is complicated, so back off. Now, we'd be glad to, mister, only it's out of our hands now. Come on, let's go. Out of your hands? Yeah, leave me out of that. I think there's more story here, and I'm getting very interested. Sure. Well, so is the DA, and so is the cops. You know, if I were you, I'd tidy up your office a little, mister. You're gonna have some company. Let's go. Yeah, it's me. Yeah, some Ryan people were here. The girl, her father, uh, the newspaper man, a couple of guys. Yeah, they're talking DA, they're talking cops, big pressure. Hey, maybe they got the beef to pull it off, I don't know. Well, what do you want me to do? All right. Okay. Five friends living it up in Louisville. They're breaking rules, rewriting tradition, and living life on their own terms. A new original reality series, Southern Bell's Louisville, premieres tonight at 10 on SoapNet.